Who are you and what do you do? Uh, I'm Dr Nick Dunn. Uh, I'm Principal Lecturer here at the Manchester School of Architecture. Uh, I am the Director of Studies for Graduate Programmes and also a Programme Leader for the Master of Architecture course. So what is architecture? Architecture is usually uh, a combination of material, social and spatial systems or effects, um, but it doesn't necessarily require buildings. What's your approach to teaching the subject? Well, at the moment, uh, I, I largely teach postgraduate. So I guess I'm in a, a position where I'm uh, directing with, with my colleague, uh, Richard Brook, uh, a research by design uh, atelier, uh, which means we, we, we're quite lucky because we can do what we like. Uh, and what we're interested in is looking at architecture not as a static condition, not the city as a series of uh, objects in space, but perhaps considering the contemporary city as a series of processes, flows, systems, and really looking at architecture as events over time rather than as objects in space. How important is model making in architecture? I think it's critical. Um, I think what, what the practice of making does is it, uh, it, it, it's a, it provides a performative function. So you you engage with something physically in a very different way than when you draw it. I mean, architecture for, for generations, for centuries, has been a series of negotiated translations. Um, whether it was from drawings uh, or perspectives, we've, we, we've always had a sort of uh, distance from, from the actual, between the representation of architecture and obviously its ultimate production but also as, um, as, as, as for the students to have a direct engagement with space, with materials and those kind of concerns uh, when they're thinking about things. It also allows us to critique those things as we go along and provides a record of the process. So. Do you think it's pushed enough as a visualisation technique in architecture school? Um, probably not. Uh, and and I, I, think, I think that's because um, students often may take a little while to understand why they're making a model. Uh, and I think one of the things uh, that some of my work in the area has tried to do, and there are a number of other people doing it as well, is to try and help students be more discerning about why you would make a model and how you would make a model, rather than what a model is. You know, there are different types of models, they perform different functions, and what's interesting about that is they are dynamic tools. A model that's made for a certain purpose, such as a design uh, exploration model, might actually become a final model uh, or, or develop something else. So they become may become uh, nested within each other or become series. So they're quite important from that point of view. As a tutor, what do you think is the most important skill a student can take from an undergraduate degree, for example? Uh, I think I think we I think one of the things we do very well uh, uh, here is we. We teach people to think. Yes, I think you can have uh, great, great drawing skills, great CAD skills, great modelling skills. But if you can't really think strategically, you, you, it becomes a bit of a closed end game quite quickly because you, you're unable to operate. And of course, the great thing about architects is that they can think on their feet in lots of changing contexts, in lots of different scenarios, and work with lots of different people. So I think what students get really from here is an ability to think um, because they can use that thinking to then design. So is there a particular skill that you think um, the Manchester School of Architecture instills in students in the postgraduate side of things? Um, well, I think, I think it's there in the, in the undergrad. I think what, what flavours uh, our undergraduate programme is a relationship with urbanism. Urbanism is quite, uh, because of its extensive nature, it's quite a tricky, messy thing for undergraduate students to, to get hold of. And quite typically, most undergraduate degree programmes don't necessarily engage with it. You return back to the object in space and we'll do a building without really considering the sort of wider context of where that is, why it is and how it is. Where I think we then really enrich that offer is at the part two where each of the ateliers has a specific position in relation to urbanism in the contemporary city and how that's reread and understood. What I think is uh, more characterised in the part two is that all the staff are involved in research informed teaching so they're bringing that into the school 
uh, and it's a cyclical process because through working with the students on more of a level playing field their ideas get refreshed the students ideas contribute towards those th that thinking and so you get research informed teaching but you also get teaching informed research because it's a two-way process so as well as being a tutor and heading the the master's programs here you're also doing a lot of your own research yes what is the, the sort of the subject of your main research at the moment uh well i i uh did a phd uh, on model making and that was really to understand why students design what it is that they do i was trying to characterize and record design behavior i'm uh, i'm not an architect in the qualified sense i didn't get part three and uh, there are people out there that do buildings much better than i ever could which strangely has meant i've always operated on either side i'm interested in the micro and the macro my research is interested in two things it's interested not just in what we design, but why and how we design, and perhaps with digital technologies, maybe even where and when, because um, we can print things almost like having a little washing machine by our side and just off it, off it pops. So it's the one-to-one -one production, how the design data becomes the, uh, the construction data. Where do you think your research is heading then? Oh, goodness me. Um, probably more books and conference papers, I would imagine. Uh, but I think I think where it's heading at the moment, um, the last uh, collaborative uh, book I did was called Urban Maps, and that was really looking at different devices and art artistic practices for the way people networked and recorded their way around the city. That's led to a, a much more extensive research uh, between myself and, and Richard Brooke in the context of infrastructure what do the networks of the city actually mean how do they record what their legacy is uh, what what their future will be and actually looking at how things move around because buildings really um, and architecture generally through its acquiescence to the demands of the market is quite marginalized the minute we get bespoke very expensive projects and then we get a lot of all the stuff that's kind of outside this building that can often be quite uninspiring but infrastructure will be the big project of the 21st century and continue to be. Uh, what is your advice to people studying architecture now who maybe don't feel they want to go and become qualified, but they do want to enter academia? Don't become qualified. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's, uh, you don't need to do it. Um, what I think is really important about architecture, and it's why I studied architecture, and I don't think I appreciated this when I was 18 years old, it's, it sort of made sense afterwards, um, is it's truly interdisciplinary. You have an opportunity to, to study and engage yourselves in, in the economies of the city, in the politics of space, in the creativity and production of design. And those are amazing things that can take you off into, into lots of different avenues. Uh, and the reason I came back for part two, my part one experience was okay. It was nothing superb, but I, I worked with under under a good architect, and I, I did I did learn a number of things. It didn't really make me want to be an architect, but my thirst for curiosity and for 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 invention carried on that carried on that research. Now, if you want to go into academia, the best thing to do is obviously probably start studying architecture and get involved. We have a very vibrant uh, student association here. Uh, we've got a very good uh, graduate teaching assistant program here, so you get involved with those things. But I think it's curiosity and interest in, in, in cities, in landscape, in buildings, in materials, in people. I mean, fundamentally, this all comes down to people. If we're not interested in each other and what our city's going to be in a, in a sustainable sense in the future, then there's little point. And I've yet to meet many people that aren't interested in people.